Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special joint webinar uh, that we're holding today. Uh, today, we've got uh, Cody Sukapa from Microsense and Michino Hisabayashi from Pix4D Software, uh, and in conjunction with CR Kennedy and company. A brief introduction on CR Kennedy. Uh, we're, we have offices across Australia and New Zealand with 270 employees. We're Australia's largest supplier of geospatial instruments and the Australian distri distributor for Leica Geosystems. But we're also the distributor for leading brands such as DJI, Microsense, and of course, Pix4D. Our philosophy is to provide customer focused solutions for your business. We'll be following up with each and every one of you in the coming days after the webinar. But if, during the webinar, at any time, if you have any questions, please type these in. Uh, and these will all be answered at the Q&A session at the end. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Cody from Micasense. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Robert. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Cody. and. Uh, Today I'll be pre presenting some of uh, Microsense products and also some of our applications um, through some of the sample imagery that we have um, today. Um, and today it'll be more of the focus on, uh, I'd say more of on the Altum in the dual camera, uh, which is our uh, one of our newer products. And yeah, we'll be in. So, um, So Microsense is uh, a company uh, founded in 2014, and uh, we're based in Seattle. Uh, we have a, a bunch of uh, GIS specialists, engineers, remote sensing scientists. Um, our basic uh, business is basically um, creating uh, multispectral solutions. And uh, we have a global presence around 70 countries, um, and our uh, multispectral sensors, they're integrated with, they can be integrated with most drones, um, considering that it's a very agnostic product, and the data can be processed with third-party softwares, such as Pix4D. Um, and two of the most uh, prominent uh, Pix4D applications that are used with the multispectral sensor, sensor is Pix4D fields and Pix4D mappers. And later on, uh, Michino Sam will be uh, presenting for Pix4D um, and the uses for Pix4D fields 1.9. So uh, I'll start with uh, talking a little bit our, uh, briefly about our products first. Um, so we have three different sensors, the first one being the Red Edge MX. Uh, we have five bands, five narrow bands for the multispectral sensor, red, green, blue, red edge, near infrared. And the resolution is about eight centimeters per pixel at when you're flying at a height of 120 meters. Now, when you buy the Red Edge MX sensor, we also include a CRP and DLS2, in which I'll talk a little bit later uh, about it. Um, so with the DLS2, it's not only a downwelling light sensor, but it also has an embedded GPS. So we take our radiometric calibration very seriously. Um, this is so we can get always get the most accurate data uh, when flying uh, the camera and collecting data. So as I mentioned earlier with the kit, we include the sensor calibration and also the field calibration. And this enables time analysis using uh, the agronomic models. So if you fly on different days, you'll still get the, uh, the right consistent um, reflectance data. So uh, lighting. So with our calibration uh, panel, uh, you, is, we, we usually um, ask you to uh, capture an image of the calibration panel before and after the flight. And then use one of them for the best represented representation of that day that you fly. Um, also, uh, usually the ideal lighting is always uh, consistent conditions. So um, either a sunny day with no clouds, or when it's a cloudy day, you can use a DLS2 in the calibration panel together. And that way, even though 
the light coming from above is not consistent, the ambient light is not consistent, you still have the DLS2 to calibrate that data in the post-processing. So here's an image of what the DLS2 correction looks like. The one on the left is when there was clouds. As you can see, here's stripes on the left side of the image, uh, stripes of clouds, and that's without the DLS2 correction. Now, the one on the right is after using the DLS2 correction. And so now the data, reflectance data, is much more consistent. So uh, when capturing with our Red Edge MX sensor, um, you get five different bands, uh, five different images um, for each capture. And they're all in TIFF format. And so you have these TIFF files, which then you can create a map to uh, a GeoTIFF, um, which can be, for example, processed in PIX4D. So with the five bands, you can uh, make several indices, um, including like a, the RGB composite, a DSM model, um, also NDVI, NDRE, which are two different vegetation indexes, um, also a CIR, uh, color infrared. So it's a false color composite where you label infrared as uh, red, as you can see on the um, right bottom quarter. Um, that's the most vivid red parts are where the near infrared is most prominent in reflectance. Um, and usually a healthier plant will indicate a higher um, in near infrared reflectance value. Now we have our Altum, which had, is also five bands, but we also added a thermal band to it. And it's also higher resolution for the five bands, such as um, at five centimeters per pixel at 120 meters height of flight. Now what's nice about the Altum is uh, because it's high resolution and you get a thermal uh, band, you can now uh, analyze with multiple data source sources because the thermal and the, uh, the multispectral are synchronized together. So you don't have to have an extra thermal camera plus a microsense sensor, but rather all in one microsense sensor. And so when you're analyzing the data, you don't have to do anything extra, for example, um, synchronizing thermal and multispectral data together. So you don't have to figure out how to align the data sets, basically. So uh, one of the uses of the Altum is the field trials. Um, it's useful for, especially with the higher resolution, it's useful for phenotyping. Um, as you can see on the left image here, um, it's early corn emergence. And so you can do, for example, like stand counting, um, even during early emergence stage. Also, uh, another useful place is, for example, when you're measuring plots, um, you can get the average plot viger of each, uh, each plot over here, as you see on the right. And uh, you can see these values, um, 0 0.7 on the top left and 0 0.65 on the top right. Those are ND, average NDVI values of each plot. Also, uh, what's also useful about uh, the Altum is also it uh, is good for irrigation management. So the Altum provides a synchronized thermal and multispectral imaging together so you can analyze. Um, so for example, on the top right and bottom left, or bottom right, um, on the top right, first you see the thermal band um, in use and the cooler areas represent the dark purple. And so we identified that these are irrigation leaks. And when we look at these irrigation leaks, we can see which ones are earlier irrigation leaks and which ones that just started. Um, by looking at the NDRE value on the bottom right. And so you can see on the bottom right picture, the left side and the right side has um, higher NDRE values compared to the other boxes in the middle. So that means that these irrigation um, leaks happened a lot earlier, whereas the ones in the middle have just started recently. The other bottom uh, two images, 
the middle one in the left. Uh, the middle one is the thermal layer. And you can see that there's this red patch where the box is. And that's showing that this part is where um, the irrigation system is not working, whereas the left side of the box and the right side is. And so if you're looking into the RGB image, so if you have a regular RGB camera, you're not able to um, see the irrigation problem that is happening here for the sprinklers. And we'll get into more um, Altum data uh, later on. Now we have the dual camera system as well. And the dual camera system is basically two uh, cameras put together. And so now you can get 10 bands. So we have the Red Edge MX, the red camera, and then the Red Edge MX Blue together. And we also provide uh, integration kits um, for, for example, if you have a DJI drone or even OEM kits, if you have uh, a, like a fixed swing or VTOL, we do have um, kits to help support that. Now what's nice about the um, 10 band solution is now you can get into a lot more options in, for example, doing classification of plant species or even comparing satellite imagery. So here is a comparison of the Red Edge, the dual camera compared to the satellite imagery, uh, satellites like the Sentinel 2A and Landsat 8. Now we do, the 10 bands that we chose was two different blues, two different greens, two different reds, three different red edges, and then near infrared. And as you can see, it correlates to the Sentinel 2A and Landsat 8. The reason why we do this is because some of our customers use satellite imagery but found the resolution is way too little or it's not enough um, compared to using a multispectral camera which has a higher resolution. Here's an example of a satellite imagery versus uh, the dual camera resolution. Uh, with the Centennial 2A, at a, with the RGB image, um, you can see here on the left is 10 meters per pixel, whereas on the right, the dual camera is eight centimeters per pixel. And so you can see a lot more information with higher resolution. Not only just RGB, but um, because it's multi-spectral imagery, we should look at the false color composite as well. So here's a false color composite the one on the left, the same satellite, Sentinel 2A, versus the dual camera. And so you can see a lot more information. For example, the water versus the sand. You can see different uh, types of species of trees more prominently, also the different crops and such forth. Also dead trees versus the living ones, which are in a, a, a vivid red. Okay, so now we'll get into more of the de data sets. Um, the first one up is a Red Edge MX. Um, this one's in Argentina. It's a rice field, uh, approximately 341 acres or 138 hectares. So looking at the RGB image, um, you can kind of see these stripes over here. At first, when we looked at it, we thought it was some kind of uh, data uh, some data stitching errors or you know some kind of sunspot um, striping going on here. However, um, if you look at the NDVI, then we can see that actually uh, there is some variation in the biomass of these stripings. And we found out that this was actually more of an operational issue um, from the farmer. So the the green areas has a higher NDVI value. And these are the places where um, the, where the, uh, the fertilizer, urea, urea application was uh, spread. However, in the middle, it didn't get any um, of this for fertilizer. And so this is, uh, so it, it follows this uh, pattern of the granular fertilizer. And so it wasn't evenly applied. We can see it more prominently in the NDRE here. 
So uh, basically, by using the multispectral imagery, the outcome basically is to um, show that the farmer, you know, that uh, that there needs to be better management for the fertilizer um, application. And so by looking at this data, um, they're now able to maximize the yield um, by um, looking into this problem and spreading the fertilizer evenly next time. Here's another data set, um, this time from the Altum. Now up on the RGB, um, you can see that there is some greenness um, that is highlighted in some areas where it's lacking growth in the light green. Um, and so this data set you see here is hemp. You can also see some bare soil right here. But other than that, you really can't get any other information out of it. So uh, we used the near infrared, red edge, and red false color composite. And here on the right, uh, you see this orange spot over here. And so um, this orange spot, we thought it must be something else. So maybe some other, not hemp, but maybe some kind of weed that we see here. And so by looking into the area in orange and then going, actually going out into the field, doing some ground truthing, we actually confirmed that it was a grassy weed. Now you can see that this grassy weed and the rest of the hemp looks very similar um, in terms of the greenness. So by going out to the field, you might not even be able to spot it unless you got this multispectral false color composite um, of the data. And as you can see with the RGB image, it's all green. Whereas with the false color composite, you see the um, orange um, part in the box. Another thing interesting about this data set is with the NDRE, you can kind of see these loops over here. These are extra, actually extra seeds that the um, farmer wasn't able to finish up. And so he just drove along in loops throughout the field to finish up this extra seed that he spread. Um, one thing that we can look in the NDRE is that instead of doing these loops um, for better management, if you do have extra seed next season that the farmer can spread in these lower NDRE values um, where there's less vigor, such as these red um, patches of area for those extra seeds to get to maximize yield. Looking at the thermal, you can also see that the healthy or parts of the field are corresponding in dark purple where they're cooler areas, whereas the red and yellow areas are places where it is um, hot. Um, and you can even tell that the hot areas is where the soil is absorbing the heat. Also, it will be important to look at the, it's also important to look at the digital surface model as well. The yellow corresponds to the higher elevation, whereas the red um, corresponds to the lower elevation. Um, what we need to get out of this is that uh, we can see in this area where the slope is starting to go off um, in the DSM is also corresponding to the area where um, the plant vigor is lowest. So maybe there's some kind of uh, soil or irrigation issue there as well that needs to be paid, paid attention to. Now, uh, the next one you see here is also from the Altum. This is a kiwi orchard. Um, and um, they usually use, for this data set, we used it for um, the, to uh, make sure that, to see if there's any water stress in the kiwi. And so the one on the right is, uh, is a crop water stress index. Um, the customer also used um, the, a method called the Cholander bomb. And then they also use our Altum thermal data. And they found out that the thermal corresponds to the crop water step stress index. Now the zero uh, value is uh, the place where the, uh, it's the hottest area of the field and also um, where it's most water stressed, whereas one corresponds to cooler area 
with less water stress. And so um, this is where they could save some money on just irrigating on the area of the zero side. Here's uh, one from the dual camera. Um, and uh, as we were talking earlier, the dual camera has 10 bands. So you have a lot more options to try to uh, find the, the special spectral sig signature of, for example, a weed in the spearmint field. So here's an example of that, um, the weed detection in the spearmint field. Um, the ones you see and on the right, uh, the pink is a Canadian thistle and the light green is the mustard seed. And so this, we used a maximum likelihood classification method, which is kind of like a machine, machine learning method um, to generate this classification between the weeds and the crop. And this was using a combination of the 10 bands. Now we even have an online viewer that you can also check out. Um, and I'll show you here in a minute. So uh, what you see here is if you go to our webpage, you go to products, uh, sample data, and dual camera sample data. Sorry, it's taking a little bit of time. And then you go to explore dual camera data online. And then it'll get you into a web viewer. Now I'll show you this web viewer here. Here's a web viewer of that weed uh, detection in the, in the spearmint field. Um, we have information like RGB, CRR, uh, our own weeds layer, and different false color composites. And we also have the vector info, which shows where the Canadian thistle and spearmint field uh, and, and the wild mustard seed is. If you want to look at other data sets, um, please uh, go to the settings button over here or this mechanical button over here. And um, you can also look at other data samples online. Um, and we have this map right here to show it. For example, a paddy field in Thailand. And you can get different layers as well here. Okay, we'll go back to the presentation here. Okay, the next data set you see here is uh, you also using the dual camera. Now, what's interesting is uh, using the red edge, um, you can um, really sort out the difference between the trees. As you see on the uh, on the left, it's an RG RGB image. You really can't classify uh, the two different species of trees here. Whereas when you use a false color composite, um, especially with the red edge, um, they give off different um, values of that red edge band. Um, you can now uh, see, quantify how much of this area is the orange type of tree versus the light green. Here's just another image of it. Okay, and uh, lastly, I would like to show one more data sample. Um, this one is monitoring algae in a man-made lakes. Now, what you see here is an RGB image. Um, this was flown with the quantum systems uh, drone with the dual camera. And uh, on the on in the middle, you see these different man-made lakes, and they're all green. Um, green, the water's green. Uh, there's actually algae here which is green, which you really can't see in the RGB, and also the trees are green. And so you can't really see much or quantify it or, or to identify anything with the RGB composite. However, if we use, again, another false color composite, this time using the near infrared, and then from the dual camera, the, the, uh, the blue red edge MX blue part, the red edge 705 nanometers and the green 531 nanometers uh, wavelengths, you can now sort between the water and the algae. So you can really identify the algae blooms here. And uh, one of the reasons why we use, a, for example, the near infrared band is because the water absorbs the near infrared, whereas uh, the algae uh, and the trees don't absorb as much of that near infrared, which is why it's appearing uh, green and the, the red and kind of orange here. 
not only can you sort between the algae, the water, and the trees, um, you can even see kind of different types of trees in here between the green ones and uh, the more orange and red ones, vivid orange and red ones. Here's just another side-by-side -side comparison um, zoomed in. Um, so yes, in terms of the workflow, um, first, uh, choose your drone. Um, we support, uh, we have several integrations with um, third-party drones like uh, the fixed swing and VTOL drones, um, which you can also inquire with uh, Ciara Kennedy later to see what, what arsenal they have. And also uh, DJI drones, um, which we also provide integration kits with them. So once you set up, uh, once you f get the drone, get the camera, you then find the drone mission planner to control the drone flight path. And then after that, retrieve the data and then process the TIFF files into an ortho mosaic. And this is where uh, Michino san will also come in um, talking about uh, processing the data um, with, with our sensors. And then analyze the data. And yes, here's a, a integration kits of our, uh, with the DJI drones. Um, that includes Inspire 2. Matrice 200, 300, Matrice 100, and then also Matrice 600. All right, uh, now we'll talk about the uh, software part in which I will change the presenter to Michino-san. Thank you, Cody. I will share my screen now, and I will switch it as well. Um, okay, excuse me. Okay, there you go. So now you're looking at the right screen. So um, thank you, Cody, for the introduction. And okay. Uh, okay, let's talk about how you can process those images that uh, and make you best use of the images captured by some great multi-spectral cameras by Microsense in Pixel field. So my name is Michino and I'm a business development executive at Pixel and my focus area includes Australia and uh, Oceania region in general. Very happy to co-present this webinar with Microsense and Sierra Kennedy. So before I jump into the nitty gritty of Pix4D fields, let me present to you some overview of Pix4D as a company. So we are a software company headquartered in Lausanne, Switzerland. And yes, Lausanne, Switzerland. And based on the technology called photogrammetry, um, we develop software and related applications and solutions that generate measurable 2D and 3D representations of reality um, from images. And we have uh, professional customers in different industries ranging from geospatial surveying, um, of course, agriculture, public safety, construction, uh, as well as industrial inspection. And we now have a rich product portfolio that enables our customers to get done what, they, what needs to get done with more, efficient, more efficiency. So we, at Pixel D, we have offices in six countries around the world. And thanks to our global partnership network, including our premier reseller CRK in Australia, we consider ourselves a leading photogrammetry software company. And to note, especially for this webinar, the Tokyo office, which where I'm based, on, based at, has become the Asia Pacific regional office as of this year. So we are now closer uh, to serve our customers and partners better. So um, for the users in agriculture, we definitely recommend the software called Pixel Fields that we'll talk more about today. Um, it is a it is as it is the dedicated software to meet the needs of um, going from images to 2D maps and index maps very quickly without um, having to leave the field. However, um, as, as Cody also noted, I do want to note that some users also uh, use our software called Pixel D Mapper, if they, especially if they want to generate 3D models 
for survey grade uh, digital surface models. And just adding in here uh, that we also offer this product called Pixel Engine that you can use to empower more customization and automation in your enterprise workflow. So diving into Pixel field here, it is our uh, advanced agriculture mapping software for aerial crop analysis. And that's a mouthful. But what we do essentially is to take the images as inputs, convert them into 2D maps. And Pixel fields also offer a suite of tools that are useful to go on with the further analysis and um, connect it to the actionable, uh, actionable actions. Yeah, and so everything for this uh, product is offline and local, and all you need is a lightweight Node PC that you can also take to your field. So a bit of an overview of the product. So it is a desktop software that is available both in Mac and Windows. And as input, we can take any um, sort of standard RGB camera sensors as well as multi-spectral sensors, and we work great. Uh, very well with MicroSense. So of course, we support um, all of the sensors that uh, Cody just presented, including the Red Edge, dual camera system, as well as Altum. And, and of course, uh, we also support other uh, multispectral cameras out there in the market. And if the data set includes calibration targets, we automatically recognize them and include them in our analysis. So, I list here all of the tools and outputs that um, Pixel fields can generate, but I will go over those uh, a bit later in the demo. So I want to kind of quickly go over these four key different uh, key differentiators that Pixel fields has as a product. So let's see: in-field results, reliable maps, trusted results, and connected. Let's see uh, what these mean. So first of all, um, in-field results. So Pixel Field is a really great tool because you can go from images to maps, 2D maps really rapidly, and there's no internet connection required for, those, for the processing. So this means you can just take your lightweight PC to the field, capture the data, and process the data right away, and analyze it, and if necessary, make um, decisions quickly, and you know, like uh, apply for it. Uh, additional fertilizers in certain spots, etc., so that um, you can really go from images to actions quickly. And secondly, re reliable maps. So as um, Cody also mentioned, uh, you know, like I think for agriculture, a lot of people also use satellite image analysis, which is also great. However, if you use drones and images and uh, process the, you know, like um, software like Fix for the Fields that you can process your images whenever you want to, then this way you can get more uh, higher resolution images, of course, as well. And, and you can capture those data whenever you want uh, without having to rely on when the satellite passes over your field or uh, having to worry about the um, cloud conditions. Okay, number three is trusted results. So, Similar to uh, what Cody was describing, uh, at Pixel D, uh, we take radiometry seriously. And so all Pixel D Fields offers um, radiometric calibration to the mapping solution. So you can trust our results that it is uh, calibrated and you can compare results over time. And lastly, it, it is connected. So um, we do take a lot of inputs from different cameras and the outputs as well. I want to highlight that we can export all of our um, results, like the ortho mosaic or index maps in, you know, like industry standard uh, formats like GeoTIFF. And we also provide um, export options such as PDF report and CSV export of the statistics so that you can continue um, to use, you know, like share your results and continue to analyze them in however way that you uh, you prefer. I also highlight here that um, Pixel D Fields so it was released almost three years ago in 2018, and it has been evolving ever since. 
So um, the latest version we have now is the one point, so it feels 1.9, which was released uh, just a few months ago. And yeah, so <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot on the timeline, but some things I want to highlight is Pixbody Feels is a multilingually supported uh, software, so you can choose uh, which language you want to use the product in. And of course, the Microsense dual camera was, uh, is now supported from 1.9. And another exciting thing is for one, is that from Pixbody 1.9, uh, you can also export the statistics as a CSV format, which I will also show you a bit later. And um, coming next, we also have two more releases uh, planned for 2021. And we plan to further, uh, further I guess, smoothly support uh, the spot spraying workflow with Pixbody Field. And there's actually a great YouTube video, just, just about 10 minutes, um, called Spot Spraying with Pixbody Fields. I definitely encourage you to uh, search, Google it up and watch the video as uh, my colleague walks, walks you through a workflow that goes from images to spot spraying, uh, I guess like a flight plan shape file in less than 10 minutes. So um, yes, please check out our YouTube channel as well for more information. So now uh, I want to jump into some demo. Um, so here, Cody, could you confirm that you see uh, Pixbody fields here? Yeah, okay, actually I see it now. So um, here yes. is the, yeah, perfect. Here's the home screen of Pixbody fields. Um, you can list you can kind of organize your projects in however you want. You can organize by your clients, organization, prop types. So it's uh, easy to kind of sort, th sort through the projects if you have, if you start to have uh, a lot of uh, projects. And so let's see, if I were to start a project here, um, I can either add a JPEG or a TIFF um, images or folder and this is just an example. I, I don't. I'm not going to process things here, but I will um, add these images. For example, this, these are from uh, Red Edge M cameras, and you can see the uh, calibration targets in captured in the images. And here are the multi-spectral images that you, you know, you can capture as Cody described and get it from get them from your SD card from your drone, your camera. And once you import them into Pixbody fields, okay, so yeah, so you'll you, you'll see some simple uh, processing options out here. So you can turn on and off the rig relative calibration, which makes sure that all of your images are aligned, uh, as well as the radiometric calibration, and of course I'll leave it on, um, which makes sure that you can uh, really compare across time your images uh, taken. For example, on different dates to monitor your field. And for certain uh, cameras, we also provide um, users can also provide the software uh, some cues to like, okay, so what is an overcast day or a clear sky day, which helps uh, speed up the radiometric calibration process. And you can also limit or unlimit the resolution of your output so that if you are in a hurry to make um, or if you want to process quickly, then you might want to limit, for example, the maximum total megapixels of the outputs. And on the other hand, if you want to take this limit away, then the software will generate results that is um, highest resolution as possible from the input images. Okay, so yeah, so just a few very simple processing options and you can hit apply and start processing right away. And I will not process this images right now, but I want to show you uh, what can be the result. So this is an example data set from Microsense, uh, dual camera actually. And I believe this is like a lettuce field from Washington State. Okay, so let's look at this project a bit. Um, so after importing the um, images and stitching them together. 
you will end up with this uh, ortho mosaic that we uh, that is generated. And this one, of course, has um, it might be difficult to see here, but okay, so you can switch off the background images like this. Yeah, so you might have a lot of areas in your map that you, you don't actually want to analyze. For example, this uh, lake here or some like trees here. In that sense, then you can uh, crop your map into um, using our boundary feature. You can either import shape as a boundary, shape file that you might have already, or just uh, draw it out yourself uh, using the boundary. Um, yeah, so anyway, so now this map, this source mosaic is cropped to just the area that you want to analyze. Then you can, so this is the Orson mosaic uh, showing your field in RGB. So, I mean, with human eyes, you, you can already see some differences, right? That like, okay, so this area is more greener than this area, for example. Um, then you can go further and generate some index maps very quickly and easily. So you would go on this uh, left side tab to the index tab. And from here, the software already, um, you know, like rec recognizes the camera and the available band avail uh, available for analysis. And in this case, um, it is using the, the dual camera, so it has 10 bands, as Cody mentioned. So there are uh, a bunch of uh, available indices that uh, we already list here. Um, these are some indices that is. Uh, you know, like available to create with the 10 bands. And so NDVI, for example, NDRE, you can select whichever ones you want. And in addition, you can click on this uh, custom index calculator tool that um, you can use to create your own uh, custom index that you want to. So here you will have the available bands information, and then you can create your own formulas to create what you need. Okay, so and generating, I'll do it uh, right away. Uh, generating index maps is really quick as uh, the images are already aligned. So here I just selected on uh, NDRE and NDVI, for example, but here it's already uh, generated. And let's look at, for example, uh, NDVI. <laughs> um, and if you go to the right side panel, and click on visual. Here you can uh, start uh, utilize our advanced visualization tool to kind of switch up how the map looks like, grayscale, red to green. And this is the, a very useful tool where you can, uh, you can select the range of uh, values that you want to see on your map. So I guess, um, for example, in this PRI, um, index. Maybe you're not so interested in looking at the entire thing, but only the values uh, which show up as higher or lower in the histogram. You can also equalize your histogram to make it easier. So yeah, um, this visualization tool is really useful in kind of selecting which areas you want to focus on and see more clearly what, need, what you need to see in the maps. And I also want to show you the comparison tool that we have here. You can select double or split, and I really like the split mode where you can um, select which map layer to show on the left side and the right side. So let's see, uh, right now the ortho mosaic is displayed on the right, and let's look at NDVI again um, on the left. And here you can really start to see, oh, I, yes, I'm sorry. And here you can slide over. I think there is some lag here, but yeah. So you can slide left and right. Um, uh, that, you know, that's this display of the two layers. And of course these are aligned. So you can look at the same area of the field. For example, maybe you're looking at the NDVI map and seeing, okay, so this red area might have issues. And if you zoom in here, 
we might want to compare the ocean mosaic as well and then kind of get 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 a better context of that area so a comparison tool is really really useful and um, another tool i want to show you is a donation and prescription tool so once you look at the ndvi map for example um you might then want to um kind of categorize these areas in more broader and uh, simpler areas and in which case then you might want to go to the donation tab and you can select which source layer you want to use and uh, for example number of classes that you want to classify your map in and very quickly you can generate these types of zonation map yes so that um, you can see in more broader sense okay which area is doing great which area is doing uh worse that you, i need to maybe check out in my own eyes or uh apply fertilizers or apply um you know different inputs in your uh actions daily actions so um yeah and this map is of course um exportable as shapefile or uh, uh kml or um uh geojson yes so these are the three types that we support so, so far and and so if i apply here uh the donation map is created and on this right side you can also choose to um create what we call a prescri prescription map where you can decide for example for this red zone you might want to apply uh like how many ever units of um uh, fertilizer or um, in you know like different inputs so you can decide for each category of the map like how you can weigh your input accordingly and then you can also calculate the total amount of inputs you need and export that whole information as a prescription map and export to use in your further uh, actions okay um, Another tool, of course, is the annotation tool. So you can uh, make point or line or area uh, annotations. And for example, for the area one, I want to show you. If you are, for example, looking only at this specific, um, I guess, strip of your field, you can choose to create an area um, annotation just like that and name it you can also add images and the area is automatically calculated and once you save it um, the cool thing is the index values you you can automatically get statistics on the index values in for this specific area that you just drew so you can get the area in hectare and the uh, mean and standard deviation of the index value. So this map is NDVI. So you can already start to see, um, you can start to, I guess, do some quantitative analysis on this area. And if, of course, if you draw multiple ones, then uh, you can start to do the comparison. And these I also want to show you how this can be utilized in another um, project here. So for example, this is the trial plot uh, example that we have. And you can see, so just like I drew, um, there are so like, uh, let's say like 17 different kinds of plots. And you can actually export all of the statistics as a CVS, as C CSV. <laughs> and then what you can do is easily for example, open it up in an Excel format. Uh, this is how we how we can export it. In all of the plots, you have the area um, as well as the in mean and uh, standard deviation of the plot area. And then uh, the, yeah. And so using Excel, of course, you can easily uh, create different graphs to do further quantitative analysis. Okay, great. Another uh, export option we have is the PDF report. 
where you can select what you need. But I want to show you quickly um, an example here. So PDF reports a great way to show um, what your projects and you know like all the annotations so that you can easily email it out to, for example, your clients or uh, your internal um, team members. Yeah, PDF reports, very useful. And sorry. So the last thing I want to show you is also a new feature where we can actually import some geotagged images onto the maps. So for example, this is a grape, grapevine field. Um, this is the open mosaic. And if you have geotagged images, so for example, what you captured in your smartphones, you know, like these days, smartphone cameras also have uh, this geolocation information or some other drone images that you captured on the data in the field. You, if you have them, you can go ahead now and import from here geotagged images. Okay, and I actually already imported them on this project here. So the geotagged images will appear on the spot of the geotag information. And this way you can really start to combine kind of the map and the actual images, aerial or handheld images that tell more story about the area. Um, okay, so that, that was a very quick tour of what Pixel Heels can do. I definitely encourage you to try it out yourself. Um, and I guess maybe we go before it quickly, before we go into Q&A. So we do have a lot of use cases on our blog, so I encourage you to check it out. And I'm also wanting to hear more about um, how Pixbody Fields is used in Australia. So please reach out to us. Please reach out to CR Kennedy uh, of, of how you're using our software. Um, OK, so I think I will give this back to Cody for Q&A. Thank you, Michino-san. Um, so let me put it back to my screen here. Right, so any questions so far? Yeah, we have questions. I'm going to start reading the questions to you guys. How do you use Alchem together with Reddit, with Reddit Blue? That's a question for you, Cody. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, we cannot use, uh, you cannot make the dual camera system with the Altem and the Red Edge MX Blue. And this is because, uh, first, they're, they're, they're two different um, camera models. Um, one has higher resolution than the other. So it, there's no way to uh, synchronize the data together between the Altum and Red Edge MX Blue. Whereas for the Red Edge MX and the Red Edge MX Blue, because they're basically like the same model of the camera with the same resolution, um, that's the only way to create the dual camera system. Thank you, Cody. I have one for Michina. Can you set fixed NDVI value limit to the destination? Sorry, can you come again? Yeah. Can you set fixed NDVI values, value limits for the donation? Ah, okay. Thank you for the question. So for the donation tool, um, today we you cannot set the uh, exact values for each classes. However, we are working on improving. I, I think that's the question. I think you wanted to set like certain values for the each uh, class of the donation. Uh, so far today, what we can do is to divide up um, the whole range in how many ever class, number of classes that you want to. Um, so it, it is, I, I guess, um, not what that we can offer today. However, we are working on improving the donation tool. And we are actually also planning to offer, I guess, more of a gridded uh, donation tool in the coming releases so that it's more easier to um, use in the field to do more spot spraying or variant rate application. 
Thank you. Another one for Pix for B. Does it have gel referencing tool to enable overlay multispectral images from different flights? Ah, thank you. Good question. So if you have multispectral images from different flights, uh, if it's from the same field on the same day, you can just process them all in one go. Um, and, you know, like we can take uh, a lot of images. We process and multispectral images tend to add up uh, quickly. So, you know, the data set might be a few thousand or maybe even more. Um, we can process those in Pixel fields. So, yeah, I, I think if you've done multiple flights on the same day or the same field, I encourage you to just process in one go. And is that, does that answer the question? I think so. Let me see what other questions we have here. We have a lot. Oh, the additional comment is from uh, Pixel Fields 1.9. We also now support the RTK uh, enabled images. So they do line up very well. So if the images already have RTK accuracy uh, geotag information, then Yes, the geospatially, the images should line, the processed images should line up very well. Uh, okay, I have one more question here. It says how to process thermal data, uh, like from FLIR, Creduo, or the H20P from the GR. Is that a, is, like, can, can someone process data from any of those like thermal cameras in PIX40 fields or PIX40? Um, thank you. So for Pixel fields, uh, for thermal camera, the Alpham thermal is definitely supported. And for other ones, I, I think I will need to get back to you I, I, on the specific cameras that was in the question. Okay, I think we have time for maybe one more question. Uh, let me check. Okay, on the statistical analysis, are available other statistics like courtesies, for example? Uh, on what, sorry? The statistical analysis. For, uh, for statistics analysis, sorry, I, I'm not hearing the question. For the statistics, what is available? Yeah, if, if there's other statistics like courtesies, for example, available, Oh, thank you. Um, oh, that's a very good point. Um, so, so far we do only offer the average and the standard deviation for the for each area. Um, but yeah, we we love to hear how how what what else you want uh, in your work workflow, and then uh, apply that in our uh, development roadmap. So yes, uh, looking forward to discuss here more about how you want to use the other um, statistics. Okay, yeah, I think we're running out of time, but if people have more questions uh, or if we didn't answer your questions, we can, um, you can email us at Michino or Microfence or even through uh, CR Kennedy, depending on your question, and we can get back to you. And the ones that we couldn't answer today, we are going to try to follow up with you later. Thank you everyone for uh, attending today's webinar. Um, yes, and then we'll also follow through with an email. Um, and we should also have a recording of this webinar as, as well um, for future reference. Thank you all. Great, thank you so much. Bye-bye.